How do you get a junior or somebody new up and running and being productive within your system? Never mind domain knowledge, there's all kinds of technical tribal knowledge about how you handle persistence, logging, validation, etc. There's all kinds of patterns and practices that apply to your specific software architecture and design. Here's how I think about it. I think about creating silos. Hey everybody, it's Derek Colbartin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design and topics like this. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So what do I mean by silos? Well, really what I'm talking about is just having decoupled units that are your pieces of functionality or whatever capabilities that you want to implement as features. That's really what I'm thinking of is kind of having those things as being as independent as possible. So here's a simplistic view. We have A and B hitting some database. A and B, these things could be types, they could be layers, whatever the case may be. But we have some direction where we're hitting our database and maybe get some value out. And this is how we kind of think about the relationship between layers or types, or whatever the case may be. The reality of it is they don't really describe the degree of the coupling. So here really we have A that may be some type of front end that has a ton of coupling to B. And again here, maybe we just have some kind of unified, simplified, generic abstraction to how we hit our database and everything runs through that. So there's not a lot of coupling there. But A is coupled a ton to B. There's a lot of coupling, there's a lot of usage from A to B. Another likely scenario is just there's a lot of indirection. So we have A depending on B, B depending on C, C depending on D, so forth to hitting our database. So there is just a lot of indirection and as well in reality, it's not this simple because on top of this, there's likely also a high degree of coupling. Now this is the exact opposite of a silo of something independent because if you were creating something new or you needed to make a change, if you're a junior or somebody new on a team, this is generally always the case. You wanna look at existing functionality, how something else was implemented, so that you can kind of mimic that. Oftentimes you'll piggyback on an existing feature or just copy something else entirely so you can replicate it. This becomes a lot more difficult if to implement a feature or a change, you have many different places that you need to make that change across, let's say various layers or types, if there was a lot of indirection. So if you have a lot of coupling, you then risk making potentially a change that can affect other things. So this is the exact opposite of creating a silo. So the idea behind a silo is really kind of like a template. You have a template that's independent that you can use for implementing new features. And those templates have all the pre-existing ideas and concepts, patterns and practices that you apply within your own system. So how you handle validation, how you handle authorization, how you handle data access, etc. Basically you could could take, as you can see my screenshot, this is really just a copy and paste of the exact same silo. Internally, how they're implemented could be obviously different with related to logic, but how they go about implementing persistence, et cetera, is the same between all of them. Now, a key aspect of this is coupling. Like I was mentioning before, all these silos are independent. They're not coupled to any other silo, meaning that if I make a change to a given silo, it does not affect another silo. The best way I can illustrate this independence is with the publish subscribe pattern. So let's say we have one particular boundary called sales. It's publishing a message. Let's say it's order placed when it's order placed in our system. And we have two different consumers right now. We have one for sending out, let's say the confirmation email. And maybe we have another consumer that's for sending uh, webhooks, a webhook system where it interacts with other HTTP APIs. So we have these two consumers. They're completely independent from each other. If something happens in the email consumer, that has no bearing on the webhooks consumer. So later on, we may decide, well, we want to add more type of functionality. Maybe we want to send a text message, an SMS out. So we can do that. We can add that existing functionality, kind of making our system more extensible. We can also decide, hey, you know what? Email, we don't want to do that anymore. We can just remove that consumer. These consumers have no bearing on other consumers. They're independent. Now the publish subscribe pattern illustrates this really well, but obviously your entire app, your entire system isn't just publish subscribe. There has to be inbound requests, let's say from a client. Now those requests are going to individual features or silos, 
But the key aspect of this is the coupling between them and the coupling to what we're sharing. You are going to be sharing things like, let's say, underlying ORM or data models, et cetera, for your particular database. But the idea here is you should be able to add new pieces of functionality and remove pieces of functionality without having to change anything under share potentially or anything with other silos. Again, these things, these particular features should be independent. That means when you're working on one, you're not necessarily changing anything else that somebody else is working on. Now you may realize that not everything relates together. So you have some piece of functionality that share the same underlying domain model, ORM, or just data model, while others have something completely separate. And at this point, you can decide, okay, well, we can separate this so we're not sharing, coupling all to the same underlying thing. This means if you have somebody new or a junior that needs to add some new type of functionality to your system, they're gonna be doing so and implementing it in isolation. They're gonna be following a template that shows them all the common practices and patterns that you have, how you do data access, how you do logging, validation, et cetera. They're gonna be guided by that. They'd have to really go off the rails to decide, oh, I'm just gonna implement my own way of doing validation. People aren't likely to do that, although that's possible, hence why you have reviews, but it's guiding them down a path on how to implement a feature. And the key part about this is the R, they're doing it in isolation. They're not gonna be affecting other features or touching all kinds of other files or layers, they're gonna be doing it independently. Now you may be guessing, yes, I'm really talking about vertical slice architecture, kind of. That's how I like to implement this. But there's nothing stopping you from really doing this even if you're using layers or a layered architecture. You're just gonna be adding various new files a part of different projects. The key part about this is coupling and that you're not changing existing functionality to add new functionality meaning I'm not going and changing an existing controller route or some action within a controller for my new piece of functionality. It's gonna be something new, I'm adding something new. I prefer again to do this by having most things in a single file, that way I can literally just change an existing file or add a new file that implements most of the functionality. But that's not to say you can't do what I'm talking about with layers. Again, it's about extending, not modifying. If you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture design and topics like this, make sure to join my channel and you get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.